Let's solve a thermodynamic uh, problem involving uh, the use of a polytropic process. Gas in a piston cylinder assembly undergoes a process for which the relationship between pressure and volume is PV squared equals constant. The initial pressure is one bar. The initial volume is 0.1 cubic meters. The final pressure is nine bar. We want to determine the final volume in cubic meters and the work for the process in kilojoules. Now, I always like to solve thermodynamic problems or any engineering problem by laying out a five part storyboard for the problem. I always begin with a schematic. And in this case, we were told that we had a piston cylinder. And so I've drawn a cylinder with a piston in it. And this piston cylinder contains a gas. And then I draw a dotted line around my system. And so in this case, we're defining the system to be just the gas. It does not include the cylinder. It does not include the piston. It's just the gas. And this, is, uh, this boundary represents that. Now, if I were to add energy to the gas via heat transfer, which we call Q, if I were to introduce energy into the gas, that would be a positive heat transfer or a positive Q. If the gas were to expand and push the cylinder out, then the gas is doing work on the environment. That would be considered positive work, okay? But we know that this is a compression problem. We're actually going to compress the gas because we're going to increase the pressure. And that indicates that work is going to be negative. So if it's not negative, we know we've done something wrong. The second part of the storyboard is a table it tells us everything we know about state one, everything we know about state two, and everything we know about the process from state one to state two. So we know the pressure and the volume at state one. We know the pressure at state two, but not the volume. And we know the process uh, follows the uh, relationship where PV squared is a constant. So that is a polytropic process. The third part of our storyboard is to draw a property diagram. So here, an appropriate property diagram would be a PV diagram. And you can see that I've plotted state one, which has a pressure of one bar and a volume of 0.1 cubic meters. It undergoes a polytropic process, which is if it's not a n equals zero or n equals infinity, if, it, if, if n is any other value, it's going to look like a concave curve. So I've drawn a concave curve from state one to state two. State two ends at nine bar, all right, but at an unknown volume. And so I'm just going to label it V2. The next step of my storyboard is to write an engineering model. And, and all an engineering model is, is a list of assumptions that I've made to make solving this problem doable. We often make uh, assumptions that uh, are not quite true, but uh, they're, uh, if they're not true, they're insignificant. Well, it is true that this is a closed system which means no mass enters, no mass leaves. The only thing that can cross my system boundary is energy, all right? The second assumption I'm gonna make is that both kinetic and potential energy changes during the process are zero. Now, often these are uh, exact uh, presumptions. Sometimes the change in potential energy is not quite zero, but it's so close to zero that we regard it as insignificant and we make the assumption anyway, okay? In almost all closed systems, we're always gonna see uh, delta Ke and delta P equals zero. There are some exceptions to that that we'll uh, illustrate later. And finally, I'm gonna state that uh, this process is a polytropic process with n equals two. Well, that's not an assumption, that's the given. And the final element of my storyboard is I state specifically what I am trying to solve for. I'm trying to find the final volume of this process and the work done by, by the process, okay? 
So this five-part storyboard is, is uh, very useful in a wide range of uh, engineering problems. It's certainly very useful in thermodynamic problems. So let's solve the first part of this problem. Let's find the final volume for this process. We know that uh, PV to the N is a constant, so we can write P1V1 squared is equal to P2V2 squared. And we want to solve for V2. Uh, we can rearrange this equation and get V2 squared is P1 over P2 times V1 squared. Now to find V2, we'll take the square root of both sides and we'll get V2 is the square root of P1 over P2. Uh, plus, or excuse me, times V1. So we can put values in here now and we get V2 is one bar divided by nine bar, that's P1 over P2. Uh, take the square root of that quotient, multiply it times the original volume of 0.1 cubic meters, and we get the final volume is 0 0.0333 cubic meters. And finally, we need to find the work done by this process uh, from state one to state two. And we know that's the integral from V1 to V2 of P dV. Now we don't have to do the integral calculus uh, all over and over again for these problems. We've already solved uh, this integral in a previous problem. And what we came up with is uh, where n is not equal to one, and in this case it is uh, n is equal to two. Then the work done by process one, two is P2 V2 minus P1 V1 all over one minus N. So we can substitute values now. The work of process one, two is P2, which is nine bar, times V2, which is 0.033 cubic meters, minus P1, which is one bar, times V1, which is 0.1 cubic meters, all over one minus N, which is one minus two. And you'll notice that the units we have here is bar cubic meters, and we want our answer in kilojoules. So we have a very handy unit conversion here, where one bar cubic meter is equivalent to 100 kilojoules. So doing the uh, math, we calculate that the work for process one, two is a minus 20 kilojoules. And this is what we expected, a negative work, because uh, work is being done on the system which makes it negative.